Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today, as you can see in the uh, header for this particular video, we are going to be testing the actual power outputs on three different radios. Well, I say three different radios. We've got the standard UV5R, the one that everyone knows and loves. We've got the UV5RH. Uh, this is the version 2, and it's important that you understand right at this stage that this is radio is going to be given away. As you can see, it's moving like that. As you can see, this radio still has its um, lovely little screen protector on. Uh, I've still got the box for it and everything else. I will be giving it away to one lucky subscriber, probably sometime end of February, early May. And in order to be in it with a chance to win this radio for free, posted to you free, everything else, you need to be a subscriber by the end of this month, which is January 2024. So, yes, if you want this radio, I am giving it away. It's the version 2 UV5RH. It's completely unlocked on all frequencies and has airband as well. You'll have seen that in previous videos. It's yours if you want it, but you do have to be a subscriber by the end of this month in order to be in with a chance. Right, power outputs, very contentious issue. The advertisers always say things like these are capable of a million watts and they never are. Um, it's always a case that they, they over egg the pudding, so to speak. The way that we're going to do this is we have, as because I'm a nerd, um, we're going to test the power on the two meter frequencies, which is 144 to 146 here in the UK, on the 70 centimeter frequencies, which is 430 to 440. 40 megahertz here in the UK and just for fun I'm also going to measure the frequencies on the uh, PMR analog FM channels now theoretically we don't use Bofeng radios to transmit on PMR channels because PMR is the license free uh, version that we have here in the UK the walkie talkie license free version and those radios should be less than half a watt and also should have a fixed antenna supposedly it doesn't actually mention that in the current legislation but definitely has to be below half a watt and these radios are definitely not below half a watt however we are going to check what sort of power outputs we are going to get on there now other things to take into consideration is that these have lithium batteries in them and lithium batteries have the properties that as you use them and the battery loses power also the output voltage reduces down to a certain point then the battery will not allow it to be switched on anymore um, because of that, we're going to ch test each of the uh, frequency bands and then recharge the battery back up to 100% before we go on to do the next one. The reason for that is that it could affect the actual readings and we are going to use a Surecom uh, SW33 Plus power and SWR meter for these particular tests. This is the meter and as you can see it has SMA connectors on either end. The reason we use SMA, uh, this particular power output meter is because it will link directly to the radio without need for any kind of adapter when you use adapters you lose uh, you get losses so what's being output by the radio there'll be a certain amount of loss in the adapter before it gets to here so it won't be an accurate reading this one radio straight into the power meter also we're not putting an antenna on this end because antennas can suck power they can reflect power what you want is something that's going to simulate a perfect antenna and for that purpose we have this this is called a dummy load a 50 ohm dummy load by attaching this to the end of the meter it will replicate having a perfectly matched antenna across all of the bands that we're testing so nothing is going to give us any significant losses like the antenna or adapters radio meter and then straight into the dummy load which replicates a perfect antenna we're going to start with the uv5rh sorry no we're not we're going to start with the uv5r then the 5rh version one which is this one and the version two which is the one that i'm giving away right I'm going to get on with it so I'm going to just time lapse all of this and then at the end we'll have a look at the results put it onto some graphs and we'll go from there right let's get on with it
Right, so after a certain amount of messing around, um, constantly recharging batteries and then setting them back up and putting them back on the wattage meter again, uh, I've managed to fill out all of my charts and everything. And I've put those into basically a spreadsheet on the computer and I've got some graphs and my figures here. I'm gonna talk through these, but as I do talk through them, what I'll do is I will put the, uh, the graphs on the screen for you so you can see them. So let's start with the, what we call the two meter band, which is the 144, 246 megahertz. And the first thing that we tested was the vanilla basic UV5R. And that was giving us an average of about 4.6 watts through the meter on high power in its narrow band mode, which is pretty good. That's what we would expect to see. Uh, they advertise these as five watts, and I would say that's pretty good. And it's also important, you can see on the graph, it's a completely flat line. It doesn't drop off at any point on the band, which is something that can happen as you move up and down the band. The actual output power that you're getting can vary. The next thing that we tested was the uh, the UV5RH version 1, which is this one. Uh, that was giving me an average of about 6.1 uh, across the band. That's indicated by the red line on there. And you can see also that that's quite flat. So for a radio that's advertised on that particular website as 10 watts, you can see that on the two meter band, we're only getting about 6.1 watts across the band. And then finally the UV5RH V2, that was actually a little bit higher. We're getting about 6.5 watts across the entire band there. You can see a little dip at the start of that on that yellow line that's indicated on the chart. But obviously, you know, there is some room for some slight errors in calculations and things as we're doing this. So all in all on the two meter band, the uh, UV5R V2 uh, had the most power output. So let's move on now to the uh, 70 centimeter band, which is that 430 to 440 megahertz. The UV5R, the basic vanilla UV5R, that averaged, I would say, somewhere close to 4.8 to 4.9 watts across the band. Again, um, advertised as 5 watts and delivering close to 5 watts. Uh, so, yeah, quite consistent results across that. Obviously, step up then to the UV5RH V1, the version 1. And that was probably giving us somewhere close to 6.8 watts all the way across the band from 430 to 440 megahertz. Again, as expected, uh, a lot lower than the advertised output. But uh, the most surprising thing was the UV5RH V2, as indicated by the yellow line on the graph there. And that was giving us an average of about 8.8 .8 watts across the 70 centimetre range. So from 430 to 440 megahertz, we went from 9.23 watts and a drop off down to 8.43. Now, some people would sort of argue that you get battery drop off as you're doing these tests. However, I went in both directions. So from 430 to 440 and then from 440 back down to 430. Uh, megahertz and that gave me the same results both times so eliminating battery drop off from that as I say I completely charged the batteries that's really good performance still a lot less than the 10 watts that's advertised with these radios on that particular site on UK barfangradio.co.uk but um, you know it's still a very well performing radio big difference between two radios which essentially are the same radio um, but there's going to be another video about that because we're going to look at the internals on these uh, and see if there's any differences and particularly between those that have airband and those that don't and we're going to discover whether or not the uh, models with airband are in fact different internally to the models that don't have airband or whether it's something that's basically written into the software that could be unlocked somehow. Um, the final thing we looked at and it was just for fun was the PMR frequencies. So PMR446 is the license free sort of handy talkie walkie talkie uh, channels that are allocated here in the UK. That goes from 446.00625 megahertz up to 446.19375 megahertz and it's 16 channelized um, increments on that PMR446 range. The Bofeng UV5 um, R, the basic one, gave us an average of about 6.6 .6 or 6.7 watts, a nice linear sort of like path across the graph there with that blue line. The UV5RH version 1 gives about 6.82 uh, 
across the uh, the hull of the Spectrum. And again, as we expect after the first two, the UV5 RH V2 gave us an average of about eight watts all the way across the Spectrum. We did see a little bit of drop off on that as well. So we went from 8.21 watts at the start of the frequency range down to 7.89 watts at the end of the frequency range. That is something that you do tend to get with these type of tests with radios. It's not all about the battery output power. It's often to do with how the power is managed as you step up and down frequencies. So with that said, I would say that the UV5RH V2 uh, it's probably the best performing radio in terms of power output. However, I, I will caveat that by saying that the difference between 5 watts and 8 watts in these handy talkies, in these radios, it's, it's not going to get you miles and miles further having the larger radio with a slightly more powerful output power. We are only talking very tiny differences in the, in the whole scheme of things. In fact, if I was to use the standard antenna on this that came with the radio and put something like a signal stick from signal stuff onto the actual 5R, hit, uh, the original 5R, the 5R would actually outperform this one. A lot of it is to do with how well you manage that power at the antenna and how that gets sent out into the world. If you've got a good, well-tuned, appropriate antenna, it's going to be far more productive than having a higher powered radio when you're only talking two or three watts so anyway i hope that's answered a few questions remember i am giving away the uv 5rh v2 to one lucky subscriber but you must be subscribed to this channel by the end of january 2024 to be in, in with a chance of actually receiving this radio winning this radio right that's it for now i'm going to do another video that will be released shortly which is going to have um discuss the internals of the radios the v1 the v2 the 5rm the gmrs version of these radios and see if there is really a way of unlocking these or whether it's something that's just, we're not going to be able to do because of the internals thanks for watching as always subscribe like comment i always try and answer the comments on the uh, on the channel and uh, see you for the next video Thanks very much.